hello guys today in my next video what we will gonna discuss is about an x-ray which is also called lateral cephalometric x-ray as you can see here in this video there is a radiograph of a patient which the name we have hidden the names patient's name because of confidentiality so as you can see this in this video this is a lateral cephalometric x-ray or you can say true lateral view why we have done this kind of x-ray this x-ray is used to determine any skeletal growth of the patient why we are doing this in order to see the growth of this max this region this is called the maxilla and this region this is called the mandible so and another way of assessing the growth is by these vertebras as you can see here these are the cervical vertebras these are the tiny bones which are con connecting to the spinal cord and through the throughout this cranium inside there is a structure called the brain so now we are going to discuss few landmarks which we see in this kind of radiograph all right now first of all coming here as you can see here this is the cranium or you can say a cranial vault now moving down as you can see here this black spot this is a sinus also called as the frontal sinus now moving below here you can see this rim this round oval shape this is the orbital rim or you can say the orbit region where there is where the eyeball is lying this is the orbit this is a frontal sinus and you can see here this tiny little bone this structure is called nasion all right this is called nasion now if you see here you can you see this outline this is the patient's soft tissue outline as you can see here this is the nose so below the nose these are the lips this is the chin moving down here this is the neck region okay now moving up here now we have discussed the rim now moving here can you see this circle this is called the cella tertia in which here there is a gland situated which is called the pituitary gland this is the cella tertia region okay now moving on to here as we can see here this white line this is the heart palate and heart palate lies in the maxilla this whole region is the maxilla now here you can see this is the upper incisor this is the maxillary incisor below here this is the mandibular incisor and here this is the chin this is the bony chin this one was the soft tissue this area this is called the bony chin area this is the whole mandible you can see here this is the coronoid process this is the condylar notch and this is the condyle the ramus the body of the mandible and below here there is a tiny little bone this is called the hyoid bone and we discussed earlier these are the vertebras all right then we have discussed about the structures what we saw in this radiograph now people might people know or they may ask what are the indications of this lateral cephalometric x-ray number 1 for diagnosis and treatment planning in the field of orthodontics to assess the growth spurt that this is the second indication number 3 to see the position of the jaws or to see the skeletal position number 3 to see the soft tissue line the profile of the patient these are the indications we use especially and particularly in the field of orthodontics now 
why we take this x-ray we take this x-ray as a record keeping for future diagnosis and how to start the treatment with this radiograph so now you might be thinking what is the purpose how can we study this x-ray how it may be helpful in diagnosing a patient what we do in this radiograph what we are doing here in future we do the cephalometric tracing of this particular x-ray we put a tracing paper over it and we draw the landmarks as i told you before and the soft tissue outline to see the landmarks we i'm going to discussing for the cephalometric x-ray the landmarks we are going to discuss here this point i discussed earlier is the nasion this is the point of the nasion this is below the frontal bone and the starting of the nasal bone this is the nasion moving down this is the orbital which landmark we are going to take is the most inferior region this is the most inferior region this is called the orbital the next point is this cella tachyca we take the midpoint here and we denote it as s which means cella now moving on here you see this spicule bone this is called the ans point anterior nasal spine and going behind this point this is called the pns posterior nasal spine yeah as you can see this structure this is a teardrop shaped structure this is called the ptm point also known as pterygo maxillary fissure point now moving here if you are going slide down can you see this the deepest curvature this is called the point a moving down this is the incisor incisal edge tip and here as you can see the deepest point curvature this is called the b point moving down further this anterior most point of the chin is called the pogonion anterior most and if you further we are going further down here the point between the anterior and the inferior region this is called gynathion point now moving here the most inferior point of the chin this is called the menton moving below, behind the jaw you can see this curvature the angle of mandible this point is called gonion moving up the most posterior superior point is the condyle region this is the also the another landmark and these are the cervical vertebras this is the hyoid bone so these were the particular points or known as particular landmarks which we use to analyze we do the analysis in orthodontics for proper diagnosis and for future treatment planning without this as without this x-ray it is not possible to initiate a plan of the patient now i must give you an example for example if it is a pre adolescent child or an adolescent child what we see here we see the growth spurts via these see uh, cervical maturation stages on these uh, bones the cervical bones we show the growth they indicate how much growth is left in the patient so that we can grow the jaw forward we can grow the mandible forward in order to improve the profile now this as you can see in this radiograph this is a radiograph of an adult patient of 20 plus years old if for example the mandible is short what how can we correct this jaw we can correct this jaw with the help of orthogenetic surgery in which we move the jaw forward to compensate the profile to correct the overjet and to bring harmony between the maxilla and the mandible so after discussing the landmarks now i'm going to tell you the the horizontal planes which are made in this radiograph what why we are making the planes to perform the analysis okay moving up here we discussed earlier this is the nasion point this is the cella point or s point if you join these two points together via a line drawing a line like this it represents a horizontal plane 
it's called as the SN plane. It was introduced or invented by a scientist known as Steiner's. This is the Steiner's point or Steiner's plane. Now here we discuss this point is the orbital, the interior mo and, uh, inferior most point orbital. And here, as you can see this small hole, this is called the Porion. By joining these two points, they form a line. The, which, this line is called the Frankfurt Horizontal Plane. Another, this name is uh, after the scientist known as the Frankfurt. Now moving down here, we discussed this was the ANS point. This is the PNS point. If you join these two lines like this, it represents a horizontal plane. This is called the palatal plane. As you can see here, these are the incisors. These are the molars. These are the premolars. If we make, make a point of this first molar and the incisal edge, if we draw a line connecting the cusp of the molar to the edge of the incisor, they form a straight horizontal plane. This is called the occlusal plane. And finally here in the mandible plane, this is the menton point. By joining this menton with gonion, a horizontal line is formed. This is called the mandibular plane angle. So these were the important landmarks and the important planes which are used in orthodontics. Now apart from orthodontics, what are its other indications in relevant to maxillofacial surgery department or you can say the surgery department. There are some patients who come with the road traffic accident cases in which there are multiple fractures of the face and the jaw region. We do this lateral cephalometrix in order to see any fracture in the cranium, any fracture in the spine region or the vertebra region, any fracture related to the orbital rim or any sort of fractures involving the mandible or even the maxilla. So in surgery, this x-ray is very important. If you want to see if there is a gunshot wound patient, we can see a clear fracture or crack in the skull or in the spine region. Now after the surgery indications, now we should move on to the indications in regarding to prostodontics. In prostodontics, what we actually see here is the angulation of the maxillary incisor and the angulation of the mandibular incisor. For example, if a patient comes in the department with partial edentulus or complete edentulus, what other thing we see in this radiograph is the amount of bone present in the jaw or simply we can assess how much there is ridge resorption. That will indicate either the candidate is fit for the fixed prosthesis or implant or for any type of prosthesis. All right, now in order to give implants to the patient, for example, if you're planning for the implant, so there are certain advantages of this lateral cephalometric is first of all, we can see the height and width of the bone in the anterior most region. The anterior teeth comprises of the incisor till the canine. And secondly, the advantage, advantage is the low magnification. Sometimes there are some magnification errors in certain type of radiographs in which we fail to process or evaluate the amount of bone or the height of bone. So this is advantageous that there is a low magnification. Thirdly, we see the skeleton relationship of the jaw. Either they are in the class 1, class 3 or class 2 region. Another we see is the crown implant ratio in the anterior most region. The tooth position which will be in the prosthesis and the most important point to evaluate the quantity of bone in the anterior region prior to symphysis grafting. This is a very important point. We see the amount of bone. If the bo amount of bone is not adequate, then there cannot be any implant. There will be chances of implant. So guys, as you all have seen in this video, we discussed many, many indications and points regarding this radiograph, lateral cephalometric in dentistry, in different fields of dentistry. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope you have gained so much knowledge in this video. So for any more dental videos, for upcoming videos, do subscribe my channel. 
in the name of sv dhirwani do share this video do like it and do click on the bell icon i will see you in the next video do take care take care of yourself bye bye